Hello, I'm Dr. Yunan. I'm Dr. Jake Begun, and we're gastroenterologists from Australia with an interest in inflammatory bowel disease. Today we are going to talk about biologic therapy that's used in inflammatory bowel disease, and today we are going to talk about golimumab. Golimumab is also known uh, on the brand name called Symphony. Why am I being treated with this medicine? Symphony is approved for a variety of inflammatory conditions affecting the skin and joints and as well as inflammatory bowel disease. And within inflammatory bowel disease, it's specifically approved for use in ulcerative colitis in adults. How does it work? It is a monoclonal antibody against a protein called TNF-alpha. Um, TNF-alpha is naturally produced whenever you have an infection and it causes the temporary inflammation to fight against that. However, in patients with inflammatory bowel disease, you have overproduction of TNF-alpha protein, hence you get a very inflamed um, gut mucosa. This medication will particularly prevent this um, protein to uh, be formed, hence it will try to heal the, um, your gut lining. How long will it take to work? In general, golibumab is given initially during the induction dosing period, and we usually assess response around three months after starting therapy. That being said, patients often experience a response early in that three month window. How do I take golimumab? So golimumab is coming in a um, inject subcutaneous form. So it comes in a pen that you have to inject to yourself. Um, obviously, initial part of the um, stage, it's a nurse or someone who's educated to provide information will teach you how to inject that medication. So the usual dose is you get 200 milligram injection at the first time, and then um, two weeks later you get 100 milligram injection, and once um, and after that you get every 100 milligram injection every four weeks. And usually we do the induction first, and if you have a good response, then you go into what's called maintenance um, phase. How long will I be on galibumab for? So as Dr. An mentioned, there's an induction phase, which is generally 12 weeks long, and then if you have a response to that therapy, you'll go on to a maintenance therapy. And while on maintenance therapy, your specialist or IBD team will be assessing you approximately every six months and continuing the medication. The goal here is to make sure that you're in a clinical remission and that you heal the gut. After you've been in a clinical remission for some amount of time, a durable remission, you may have a discussion with your specialist team about a, the suitability of a drug holiday when we cease the medication to see how things go. Unfortunately, there is a sizable uh, proportion of patients who will flare once you stop the medication, and the important thing in this situation is to be aware of that early, to restart the medication promptly, because most people will re-respond to the medication if it's induced that way. On the other hand, sometimes people have an inadequate response to medication after that first 12-week period, and in those patients, depending on whether or not they've had no response at all or a partial response, we may try a higher dose of the medication, for example, 100 milligrams every two weeks, and if that is still ineffective at getting a good response, then we'll change medications because clearly that one is not working to control your disease. Mm -hmm. And what are the possible side effects of glumamab? So glumamab is well tolerated in most people, but I can talk about some of the common side effects that people uh, report. So common, most common one is um, injection site reaction. So in order to prevent that, usually we pass on some few tips. So usually glumamab medication, the pen should be stored in fridge, but before injection, you wanna take it out in a room temperature for 15 to 30 minutes, make sure that it's a bit warmed up. Um, once, um, when you're ready, you wanna um, prepare your skin that you are injecting, which usually is abdomen or in the upper thigh. You wanna put a um, cold pack to numb that area a little bit, usually for about two minutes. After that, you should wipe with the um, alcohol, make sure it's all sides are clean, and then give yourself an injection. After injection, you also want to again wipe that area with the um, alcohol wipe so that it's all disinfected. By doing this, it will prevent that uncomfortable feeling that you might um, have um, during or after injection. Other than that, people can also have skin problem um, from this medication like psoriasis or they can have worsening of joint pain. But keep in mind, this is an immune suppression medication, so you have increased risk of infection. Common one that's reported is upper respiratory tract infection or urinary tract infection and so on. 
people do get concerned about um, COVID-19 during this pandemic and so far the um, available evidence show that you don't have increased risk of um, having COVID-19 compared to normal people and the severity of it. Will I need to take any special precautions while being treated with golibumab? As Dr. An mentioned, this is an immunosuppressant, and so we do worry about infections. So before we start a medication like Symphony, we will generally do a screen for common infections or concerning infections, including tuberculosis, as well as some viral infections. And we'll also see if you're immune to certain viruses, and if not, then that's a window of opportunity to vaccinate before you actually start the medication. Once on the medication, we do recommend some routine uh, health maintenance. That includes vaccinations for things like influenza, and every uh, so often the pneumococcal vaccine, but also other health maintenance like routine pap smears and skin checks while you're on the medication. Can I have immunization while on colimumab? Um, yes, as Dr. Bigan said, we sh you should have flu vaccination annually and have a pneumococcal vaccine. However, keep in mind you need to avoid live vaccination. So always ask um, your um, doctor before you get immunization whether it is a live vaccination or inactive vaccination. Does golibumab affect pregnancy? Golibumab has been on the market for some time now and we do have emerging data about its safety in pregnancy. And more broadly, we have a lot of experience with anti-TNF medications in general. These medications seem to be quite safe during pregnancy with no significant adverse events on mom during pregnancy or on baby after delivery. The type of medication that this is, a monoclonal antibody, does cross the placenta, mainly in the third trimester, and so therefore it will be in um, the fetal circulation and also in the circulation when the baby is born. Because of that, we sometimes will hold a dose of the medication in patients who are doing very well during the third trimester to reduce that concentration in the baby. But that being said, it seems that regardless of the concentration of drug in baby circulation, they do very well with no increased risk of infections, uh, serious infections, and also no delays in milestones, etc. We do recommend, however, because it is an immunosuppressant, that babies do not get live vaccines from born from moms who are on golibumab for the first 6 to 12 months of life. But the other vaccines are perfectly fine. And finally, a note about breastfeeding. Although these class of uh, medications do go and get expressed in the breast milk, they can't be absorbed by the baby's gut. So even if it is in the breast milk, it doesn't accumulate in the baby and it's completely safe in this situation. So overall, Gulimumab is a very effective medication for treating inflammatory bowel disease. Um, however, if you have any questions, um, you always should ask your IBD team before starting the medication or while you're on it. You can leave a comment below um, and we'll try to address it. Don't forget to press the subscribe button to get updates from our channel.